Hi folks, thank you for checking out my video. Today I'm going to do a walkthrough on how to connect your brushless DC motor to two distinct motor controllers, the hall sensor controller and the sensorless motor controller or driver. You can also connect your electric motor to this controller as well. This is typically used to control like electric bike or go-kart and so forth. I already have a video on this in terms of how to connect this to the electric motor. You can check that video out. I'll post the link down below as well. But today we're just going to cover the differences between the sensorless controller and the sensor controller. In the process, I'm going to open up this electric motor so I can take a look to see the wiring configuration and the color associated with the faces of the motor so that I can make the right connection with the controller. So first, let's touch base on each controller here. The first one here is the sensor controller. There are slots here on the circuit for hall sensors. And there's also slots here for the potential meter to control the amount of current and electricity going through the motor. And at the back end of the circuit here, you have the phase wiring, the positive and then the negative wire, and then the phase wiring, MA, MB, and MC. So I don't know how this motor is wired. I'm going to have to open it up and see if we can figure out which of these wires is MA or MB or MC. So this controller can handle from 12 volts to 36. You can use that range from 12 to 36 and it could handle about 20 amps. So let's take a look at the back here. At the back here, as you can see, are MOSFETs. The MOSFETs plays a really key role in terms of providing electricity to the electric motor, working in conjunction with the hall sensors. So here is a sensorless controller. As you can see, there's no slots for the hall sensors. So it doesn't need hall sensors to excite the electric motor. How it works is that it uses what they call the back BMF. So inside the motor, right, it's a rotor that has magnet attached to it. Once it spins, once it's placed in front of the stator, it creates what they call back BMF or electricity. This controller capture that information and tells the circuit where the, uh, the position of the rotor and in turn allow electricity to flow from the battery into the correct phases to generate the rotation in the rotor. In the back here is the same thing, six steps process similar to that uh, here and it has a little tape here to prevent electricity from flowing, from touching each other uh, once you put a heat sinker on there. This is a brushless DC motor. What you see here is a gear reduction to reduce the speed, especially if you're connected to a bicycle or a go-kart. It's just to limit the speed. You're gonna take it out, take it out here. It has a fan in the back. When you run the motor, it keeps the uh, motor cool. So I'm gonna try to use this to take the fan out. You can see it and then just push push it out like that and then pull it out oh okay these three gears here help to reduce the speed of the motor especially for electric bike or go-kart you don't need a really high speed otherwise it's too fast so here's a better look at the motor from the front wipe out all the grease and but there's a ring here that you need to get out on the ring here, you can see there's two holes here on each side. What I'm gonna do is try my best just using this plier here to see if I can like split it apart there to bring it out. And then kinda force my way out like so. All right, look, I got the ring out. The ring is the hardest part here. All right. So this is out, I see the key here. There's a slot that goes in there. Boom. Look at that. So now it's clean and we can definitely now unscrew the whole thing here and uh, take a look inside. This is what I'm talking about here. You have yellow, green and white, but the uh, motor controller says M, A, M, B and M, C. So that doesn't tell you a lot. 
Uh, you can try to do different combination, but it might not work. So I figured I want to see what's inside anyway and open it up and, and see if that's going to help. Hopefully in the hall sensor circuit inside, they will tell you face A, face B, and face C. So you get one of these here, comes in handy. Try it open. So here's what it looks like from the back end of it. This rotor is, is very strong. Yeah, the magnet is really, really powerful. So it sticks to the uh, state of winding. Right, so now it's loose. Then I can see if I can pry it open. Coming off. Boom. I'm gonna press it down. And then eventually, take this out. Sorry. So the magnet's out. Super careful. Cool. So here you have the uh, magnetic uh, rotor here and the different uh, faces of the magnet. Here you have the different state of windings. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen stator poles here. So although there's uh, eighteen stator poles, these are connected into three faces. Okay, so here's a closer look. The motor, uh, these guys here are hall sensors. So you have three hall sensors, and this is a hall sensor circuit. But they don't tell me which hall sensor wiring is A or B or C, as the controller did. So, but I can see the blue wire here, and then the yellow is in the middle, and the green is also at the edge. So that, that tells me something. On the controller, you have A on the outside, B on the in, in the middle, and C on the outside. But I can't tell for sure here. It looks like, nope, it looks like this is green. Yeah, it looks like blue is on the edge. So I might have to just uh, try different combination to see if it works. I put the motor back together and we're ready to make that connection. MA connects to the yellow wire. And then MB connects to the blue. And MC connects to the green wire. And then you have the, uh, the negative and the positive. And that is sort of self-explanatory. You basically connect that, as I have it here, to the battery. Hall sensors, right? And if you turn it around, you'll see the, uh, the lettering. The 5 volt here connects to the red wire, and then the ground connects to the uh, black wire. And then you have three hall sensors wires left. The hall sensor wires uh, coincide with the face wire. So you want to make sure that uh, green connects to green, blue connects to blue, and yellow connects to yellow. Here, all these slots here, it's for the potential meter. As you can see here, I connected already. My motor is connected, so let me just walk you through what I have here. We have three 12 volt batteries here connected in series in order to get the 36 volts required for the electric motor. And I also put a switch between the battery and the controller because I want to uh, turn it off and on, make it clean before I use the potential meter to control the speed of the motor. And uh, what you see here is the speedometer. I just wanted to see how fast this thing will go. And the speedometer comes with the uh, little battery and with a magnetic sensor. As you can see, I place a magnet facing south because the sensor will capture the south magnetic wave and give it to the, uh, the monitor here. Every time there's a revolution, it'll capture the information and will show it up here. But it needs its own battery to operate. So all of these things here, I purchased from eBay or Amazon. I'll put a link just in case you guys are interested. So when I turn on the electric motor, you'll see the speed here and it'll tell you how fast the motor is going. So with that, let's do this. I'm going to turn this knob on to open up some electricity and current to go through, but the switch is off, so it shouldn't be running, right? But I just wanted to turn it on at least halfway and then turn the switch on, see what happens. As you can see, it's moving and that's the speed, right? 
So I'm gonna turn it, turn it down a little bit. So the speed is slowing. Turn it up. All right, we're gonna turn it all the way up. Whoa, that's pretty high. That's about 16. 1600 RPM. Okay, I don't want to turn it all the way up. Wow, I think I think it could go up to 20. Let's try it. Oh yeah. Awesome. Okay, so let me turn it off. Boom. As you can see, it's working uh, beautifully. I mean, startup was a little slow. It doesn't have that good starting up torque. Maybe it does. So let me just put this on in the middle here and see how the startup is when I turn on the switch. All right, here we go. Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. Turn it off. Not bad. It's uh, responding pretty quickly. Yeah, not bad at all. So uh, let me turn this off and then uh, the next one is I'm going to install the sensorless controller and see if it works better uh, or if it's going to work at all. So in terms of wiring the faces, I'm going to use the same format that I used earlier. MA here is going to be connected to the yellow wire and MB will be connected to the blue and MC will be connected to the green. Red and black wire will be connected to the batteries. The same setup here, you have the potential meter to control the voltage and current level going through the electric motor. The only difference here is that this one has a switch to reverse the motor. I also attached this to the heat sinker and that will allow all the heat uh, to participate in this metal plate here and uh, save the electronics from blowing up or getting uh, too hot. With that, let's make the connection and see if it's gonna work. All right, so here's the setup for the uh, sensorless controller. As you can see, it's much cleaner. I don't need to connect the hall sensors wire the setup is the same. You have the batteries, 36 volts coming through. There's a switch and it's going to go through the potential meter. There's also a reversal switch here. And then you have this pedometer and the sensor. Okay, this is off. This is halfway. So when I turn it on, there's some electricity coming through. And then uh, see what happens. So let's do this. I am turning this on. One, two, three, switch. See what happens. Whoa, so it turns on, so you're getting about uh, 1,000. Wow, you can go up to uh, 20, I think. There you go. Let me turn it off. So that was pretty cool. So the only thing is you hear a big jerk there when it starts and it's not as smooth as the uh, one with the sensor. And that's because it was having initially having trouble detecting the signal from the back BMF. Remember, in order for the electric motor to get enough back BMF, the rotor has to spin across the uh, copper wire for electricity to be generated. So I think that might be the problem and it takes a while for the electricity, electricity to kick in to get that signal right. So just a little bit of startup congestion there. Let's see if we do it again. And also take notice of the uh, rotation too because I want to also switch to see if it does turn the other way. So I'm expecting a bumpy start. Yep. Same bumpy start, but once it gets started, it's pretty smooth. So let me s turn this a little bit higher. Wow. That's crazy. That's pretty high. It went up to like um, 
2,000 RPM or more. Okay. So the rotor is going clockwise position. I'm going to turn it off. Right, so it's going clockwise. I'm going to turn it off. And then I'm going to, and I'm going to switch to see if it does reverse. And turn it back on to 50. We're going to get that jumpy start again. So I'm anticipating that. Let's see if it's less in the other uh, position, okay? So let me turn it on. Yeah, it's the same. So as you can see, it's going the other uh, direction. Let me turn it up a little more. Wow. That's impressive. So once it has a little bit of a hard start, but once it started, it's really smooth. I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. If you like this video, press that like button because once you do that, YouTube will make recommendation to other viewers and they might find this useful as well. Thank you for your time and I hope to see you again soon.